Hi friends, Lacey here, the Cheeky Bum, and today I'm gonna show you how to make these sleeves for these pillbox embellishment cases. So I'm hosting this one-on-one -on -one swap over on Instagram that is a what I called a slim Christmas embellishment box. So usually the embellishment boxes are quite large, but these slim ones are just pill cases from the Dollar Tree. You take acetone and you can remove this. You just let it sit for a second and it will just wipe off. So I've got two other ones. So this is what they look like and you fill them with charms, beads, embellishments, and so forth. So as you can see here, I've started just kind of, I put some stuff in it so you could see. So it will start off looking like this, end up looking like this. And I'm in the process of making these. And I've seen a couple videos with sleeves that are just kind of like a slide sleeve that you slide over this. And I, that's what I was gonna make, but I kind of wanted to make the top a little bit dimensional. And by putting it in the sleeve, it might like snag or, or do something like that. So I come across a video, which I'll link below, that had a case kind of like this. It has a flap and it opens up like this. And she gave the measurements and the scoring, um, but not how to put it together. So like I started off with this prototype. I always do a little prototype and it was kind of some finagling and stuff like that. So I thought that I would share with you how I figured it out and how I figured out the matting and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to start with. Um, so this is basically, I have two finished ones. I have this one and I had to figure out if I wanted to mat this piece or not. And I don't think I am because I think I'm going to embellish this piece. Um, but I'm going to kind of walk you through it so you can figure it out on your own. But I really just like this and the boxes just kind of slide in like this. I can, it's got a, like a little bit of room so I can add a little bit of dimension on this. And it just closes and velcros just like that. And I can still decorate and um Put dimension on the top as much as I want. So this is kind of what it looks like. Um, I'm gonna make two of these. I have two swaps to do. These were kind of like prototypes. Um, I am gonna end up using this one as well because I had a third person. Um, I have two partners, so I'm gonna make two of them the same. Um, I've already already cut out um, everything for this one, so I'm I'm gonna make another one just like this. And um, I'm going to end up using this one, too, because she just contacted me this morning. <laughs> and she was like, oh, when are you posting the partners for the swap? And I had already done that, like, a while ago, um, weeks ago. And I, I, I don't know if it was just miscommunication, if I missed her, or uh, she, she didn't tell me that she wanted to join. But it, it's no big deal. I've already started this one, so I'm just going to finish it up and... We'll ma I'll make another one and mail it out for, so she can uh, join the swap as well. So, that being said, I'm going to kind of get into it. Put these aside. So, these are the dimensions and I will put everything in, um, in, in the description box below as well. But we're going to start off with just this piece. The box itself, the shell piece, this piece is going to be six and three quarters of an inch by 11 inches. And the scoring, we're gonna take the 11 inch side and we're gonna score it at one and 10. And move it to the th six and three quarters inch side and we're gonna score it at one. Two and seven eighths. I'm sorry. Two and seven eighths. Three and seven eighths. Four and 
and then five and three quarters. So basically, it's gonna look like this. I'm a second ahead. Look at my phone, but I feel like the cord is in the way. Oh. I did not charge my phone last night, so I have a dead battery. Or dying battery, it's not dead, dead, but anyway. So this is what we're gonna have, and this is what she didn't really show. Um, yeah, she, she, she didn't show anything. So I seen the box put together, but um, not how to construct it. So this is what we've got. We'll put this aside because we'll do the matting in a second. So it's up to you if you want to de designate which one is top and which one is bottom. What I usually do is I go through and I kind of cut out all my little folding triangles or that's what I call them I don't know if they have a technical name or not um, but you know the the bulk corner you want to kind of cut away so that they fold up easily or more easy little scissors I usually use normal size scissors but this is what was on my desk and I didn't pull out anything before I started this so here we go so anyway you're gonna cut these out and you're gonna cut them out on both sides okay so now that you have everything cut up you're kind of left with this and I like to, anyway, I'm gonna fold over these score lines and I'm gonna really give it a good fold. Okay, so now that you have those folded, I usually just kind of look at things and decide um, what I want the top and the bottom to be. Usually there's always something that looks slightly better than the other one. I feel like this way. So I think I'm gonna put this as my top. So I'm just gonna put a T on this side. And right now it doesn't really matter, um, but it will if you're super picky. So I'm gonna put this aside for now and we're gonna work on the side mats. All right, this is where it got a little tricky for me. And I suggest doing, if you're gonna do a stripe pattern and you don't care how they line up, that's great. Or if you do a stripe pattern, do something that's not super colorful. Like I decided to use the Candy Brights collection from Recollections or no. Yes, Recollections, it's uh, Michael's this year. And I really liked it because it's so bright and colorful. It has mints and teals and pinks, which I just gravitate towards those colors. So that's what I wanted to do. And I have OCD. So I now have to try to, instead of just cut it, cutting strips to what they need to be, I have to first figure out my top and then align my strips so that they match accordingly. Um, but before we do that, I forgot that we need to do this, this front cut right here. So what I did for this, because she didn't explain this either, um, and there was no measurements on this. So what I did is I figured out where I wanted my top. So this is my front flap. And all I did was take my ruler. You know, I figured out where the center point is. If this is nine inches, it's going to be four and a half. 
So what I did is I just made a mark at three and a half and five and a half because that gives me like a like a little two inch piece right here which I thought was good and all I did was connect that mark to the corner like so and same thing on the other side That's basically all I did. And then I'm just gonna cut those out. Let me get my longer scissors. So I just kind of cut along my mark. You can pull out your paper trimmer and do this if you really want, but I just found it to be easier with scissors. Like so. that you're erasing these because you will be able to see them. So erase your pencil marks. So this is where you're going to want, like before you assemble the box itself, um, I find it's easier to do your matting and then fold it because you are going to mat, add a mat on the inside. So your strips, you're gonna have two of these strips that I, I have down one and six eighths, but one and six eighths is the same as one and three quarters. So one and three quarters of an inch by eight and seven eighths. And it just kind of fits and so. I made my mat so that you had just a little bit um, of the color underneath poking through like this. If you don't like that, you can make your measurements um, like an eighth of an inch bigger and it should come up to the, the sides but I don't mind that and so that's what that one looks like um, and then you can do it all the same print if you want if you want different prints you can do it however you want like on this one um, I have a print here and then I did the same print on the inside as I did on the outside and I did alter this print a little bit. I put glossy accents on all the candy canes so they popped a little bit um, because I used a foil at the top and I wanted that, like, just wanted some more dimension to the paper. So it's up to you. You can do it all one, you can do it all different. You can have this different, this different, and all the sides different, however you wanna do it. So what I did is I'm gonna make, I wanna make them the same, these two the same. Um, because I already have the paper cut and everything. So that's why I'm doing it the same. The inside I am gonna do different just because I used um, the strips page and I don't wanna have to cut another one right in the middle just to get this. So I'm gonna cut this one and I'll probably use some stickles or some glossy accents on these to make it pop on the inside as well. So I'm gonna pop this on the inside of the box and that outside of the box is going to look the same. So you're gonna need two strips that are the top and the inside at one and three quarters by eight and seven eighths. That's what you're gonna want. Then you're gonna want, since this is 12 by 12 paper, I'm gonna have extra. Um, then you're gonna want technically three strips. I have two on here, but you have two sides. You have, you have, sorry, this front side and this back side and then this flap. So technically they're all the same size. Um, so you'll need three strips that are seven eighths of an inch by eight and seven eighths of an inch. And then your two sides, one on each side. These are one and three quarters or one and six eighths by seven and an eighth. And usually you'll get that just by, when you cut this, you'll have enough to cut your sides. So you're, you're not wasting a whole lot of paper there. Um, mine is gonna be a little bit more difficult because I have to paper piece and I'll, I'll, 
I'll do it on camera, but I'll probably speed it up. So as you're watching along, it will just kind of be sped up because you're not gonna, don't choose a pattern that's gonna make your OCD go crazy. That's all I suggest. Um, so for this piece, what I do, I think I just kind of laid it out and I, I laid it out like this so I wasn't wasting a whole bunch and I, I pulled it up so I would have a little bit of an overlap because I'm going to want a little bit of the blue poking through and I just took my pencil and made my marks and cut it and if it's not perfect like mine wasn't I didn't place this on here perfectly but I'm going to add embellishments and stuff I don't think you're really going to see it but you can see this is this is not perfect <laughs> not perfect by any means no craft is 100 percent perfect um if it is gonna make you crazy then i suggest doing something where you can um, um you can take ink to the edges um, and that usually blends things in quite nicely but i didn't want to do that to this one because i didn't like the look of it i always practice on a piece of scrap paper of doing the edges but with so much color in this, I just didn't really care for it. Um, definitely play around to it. Um, use a uh, pattern paper that is contrasting but similar to your back, your base color. That usually blends in edges a little bit easier. It's up to you. Or you can leave it blank like this one. Like this one, I don't think I'm going to do this. Um, I might... Do some stamping or some embossing of a stamp on this or maybe i just embellish this but i don't think after doing this one i don't know if i'm going to do it on this the flap on this one and it's mainly just because of the striping that's it if i was using a different pattern paper i probably would just do it um maybe i'll make this one different i'm not quite sure we're just going to go with it um but let's add our matting before folding up the box. So I know this is gonna be long because I'm talking and I'm sorry. So I am gonna speed this part up, follow along. I'm just gonna glue my matting onto this. It's gonna take me a little bit of time because I'm gonna have to try to match, to line up my stripes. So just bear with me. All right, I'm gonna stop here. So before I, I do the sides, um, I have my top on, I have the inside. I am gonna put together the box so it's easier for me to line up these stripes. So you're gonna wanna fold in all your flaps like so.
So the bottom, we are gonna want these small flaps to go on the inside. We're gonna fold this back a little bit so it's not in the way. So basically you're just gonna wanna tuck in your ends. You can trim these up if you want just a little bit. Um, it's not really gonna affect anything. Just don't want them overlapping much. So I'm just gonna trim those off a bit so when I glue it in there, um, see, they'll, they'll meet up nicely and not overlap. I just want this straight. Again, I have OCD issues and that causes me a lot of grief sometimes when I'm crossing. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. I'm just gonna take off an eighth of an inch to the small flaps. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue those sides. I swear, every time I try to do a tutorial, it turns out like, it doesn't turn out as nice as the one I made before. I don't know if I'm nervous. Tutorials are not my favorite thing to do just because there's so much editing. I feel like there's so much pressure, but anyway. So I'm just gonna glue in those edges. And before you start on the other side, just make sure that this is set and good to go, just so it's not gonna come apart on you. So that's what that edge looks like. other issue is that is I'm kind of like a close-up crafter I like to like really get in there and when I'm doing a tutorial I don't want you know my head blocking the view or in the way so I try to you know sit back and out of the way and I just I'm not used to it maybe if I did more tutorials I get more used to it okay so you have that so this is what it looks like but these flaps are going to need adjusting too because if you leave them the way they are they hit so what i do is i just kind of just kind of cut out a notch so go from the corner and just cut off the notch now if you want it to be perfect you would take this piece take it over to this piece and lay it down like that and cut it um, or if you don't care then you just snip it but since these are going to somebody else I want them to be as close as possible so there you go so now they tuck in real nice so now I'm gonna do my sides um, again I prefer like this one I I put all the matting on and then put it together and I found it to be a lot easier um, but I have to try to line up all these stripes so I'm gonna do mine this way and you know be more difficult
right so now that I have it somewhat lined up like the stripes the way I want and you know you watch me do that um, it's not lining up quite right so I need to take my ruler and cut off like another eighth of an inch or so so that I have a little bit of that teal popping through let's see if I let's see if I line up the stripes the way I want Actually, this side needs to have more taken off than this side. Let's see. Let's see if this works. up pretty well but this side I still need to take some off all right I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it anything I don't like I can with embellishments. All right, so there we have it. Um, you can use a Velcro dot, um, you could put a brad and a string there if you wanted. You could do it kind of however you want. Um, if you see this one has just um, a Velcro dot on it and it holds it pretty well. And that's all I'm going to do. You could do a magnet, so if you wanted to do a magnet before um, you put your matting down you could do that as well but if you have any questions let me know down below but that is kind of what I did it's not it's not that hard I made it way harder than what it needed to be because I chose this pattern and I wanted it to line up um, and I had already done one and I was like I'm just gonna do them both the same because that's what I do um, in hindsight I, I could like if I loved the stripes I should have done the stripes on like the top and on the inside and done the, the sides something completely different but I do like the way it looks it lines up very nice it looks sharp um, and that's just what I did um, I'm not I'm I'm gonna decorate these and I will do a project share before I go to package up these swaps so you know what the finished um, product looks like but it looks like this and I will like add embellishments and everything so stay tuned for my next video or a video coming up and I'll do a project share on these slimline embellishment box so I'll see you in the next video bye